Hello and welcome, Architect611 here. As you can see, this is my current playthrough of Farthest Frontier, but today we're going to be starting a brand new one for all of you. Um, this was my first playthrough, just to get a feel for the game. I didn't want to just be stumbling around uh, once I started recording. So I've got a feel for it, and I have a great first impression. I really do like this game. Um, let's head out of this save and start our own new one, though. Um, this first episode will be kind of a review. I'll let you know my first impressions of the game and how I like it. And um, we'll get a town started. But this will definitely be a full playthrough. Uh, we'll continue this out. I don't know how far this game goes. So we'll find out together. Uh, so, I want to read this disclaimer. Welcome to Farthest Frontier. We are excited to share this early look at the game with you as we work towards a full release. Please note that the early access version of the game is not content complete, and you may encounter bugs and possibly performance issues while playing. For assistance and to report issues, please visit our forum right here. We hope you enjoy, and we'll see you on the frontier. Now, I can say I have encountered a few bugs, but they've all been very minor so far, not game disrupting, honestly, bugs that you would expect to see in a uh, in a full released game. This has definitely exceeded my expectations in terms of bugs, if that is one of your concerns. And then as we start a new settlement here, you can see there's three difficulty levels. That's really awesome. As a fan of Banished, that's a game I've played a lot and I will be comparing it to this game. I really like that. Um, in Banished, you could control like the how harsh the weather was, how big the map is, which makes it more difficult. But you can do that in this game as well. You then also have control over your starting resources. I guess you did have control over those in Banished, but hunting and wildlife, hostile forces, and then healthcare adversity. Um, I am a huge fan of these hostile forces. If you are not, you can play in pacifist mode. For me, I've played a lot of Banished, and one of those things that I get towards the end of the city, or the end game, when there's not much else to build, uh, new things, you're just kind of like, I want to test my city out. I want to push it to the next limit to see what it can do. And I've always thought about fighting. Like, that would be a fun thing. Have AI raids, and this game did it. I, I really like their uh, thinking behind that. Um, there are advanced settings. So if you want to get more into it, and you can control all four of these categories and set them to easy, medium, or hard. We're just going to start with the basic, the default trail ba trailblazer medium difficulty. We are going to do the large map, though. I don't want to limit ourselves. I want to be able to expand as far as the game will allow us. Terrain, you can see there are lowland lakes, arid highlands, plains, and alpine valleys. We're going to stick with lowland lakes for now. I think it's the easiest one, at least in the beginning. I'm thinking maybe Alpine Valleys or Arid Highlands might be better in the end game, where you have a bunch of resources to mine, but I want to make sure that this playthrough can get off the ground and we don't end up killing everyone in the first couple episodes. So I'm going to give myself a fighting chance. And let's get started! Farthest Frontier. It's currently available in open access, but I'll be quiet for this. Old world, there was no hope of it ever improving. When our crops failed, the ruling class would still collect the same share, leaving our children to starve. And if we had any coin to our name, the taxman would appear, demanding it for the crown. The nobles hid behind the safety of their walls and did nothing when raiders pillaged the outskirts of the city. So, some of us decided that it was time to leave. That we'd rather take our chances in the wilderness, seeking the promise of a new land, than starve to death in our homeland. The journey wasn't easy. We lost many along the way. But this wild, unsettled land offers us the hope of a new start as the masters of our own destiny.
So that's a pretty epic intro, in my opinion, especially for a city builder. But I guess it is a little more than a city builder, because there are raids and there are attacks. And I think that will be a really fun mechanic to explore, different from other city builders. Um, another game that uh, Farthest Frontier has been compared to is Anno. Um, I purchased that game recently because I was looking for something similar to Banished. Um, but I can't remember what happened. I got distracted and I haven't even played it once yet. Um, something I still want to do, but this game looks like what I really wanted a couple months ago when I was looking for a game like Banished, and I am very excited to play it with you guys. I've put in a bunch of time on my own. Um, as I said, a very good first impression. Uh, I'm still curious to see what the whole combat dynamic looks like. I haven't been raided once, so I have had to deal with animals. That's what you start out with. That's your first threat. Uh, bears, boars, and wolves. I haven't had a boar yet. Apparently they're even more aggressive and tougher, but I had a couple of villagers almost get killed by bears and wolves. I had one villager die of dysentery. That's what the graveyard's for. It does seem like it's much tougher than Banished. However, there is one nice thing. You can uh, get immigrants a lot easier. What do they call them in Banished? Nomads? Okay, here we are. We finished scouting the surrounding area. Survey the land your villagers have explored and choose a promising site to construct your town center. It's important to choose a location that's near the resources you'll need to build a successful settlement. Things like clay, iron ore, and potential food sources. Gotcha. So one great thing about this game that I really like, it's a very simple feature, but they have a re-roll map button. So nice. I have started these games over and over. Main menu, reload, main menu. This really helps for these kinds of games where you might not like the first map you get, but let's see what they've given us. They give you a lot of room to look around your area, which is really nice, but most of this will go back into the black map when we actually start the game. So I'm just looking around now. Something fortunate about this is that I'm recording this, so I will always have access to what the map looks like out beyond us. That's going to be that outer ring, and then here's what's on the inside. I like that we have a mountain here. Is that iron ore? Perfect. I did not get to see that on my other map. Lots of iron ore. Deer over here. Bird's nest, you can get their eggs, hazelnut bushes, greens, more deer, nuts, bird's nest, this is looking great. Here's some willow, we'll need that for making baskets, herbs and blueberries, a sand pit, that I think is helpful for farming and other things. Boar sighted, so look at that. We've got three boar over here that we do not want to mess with, uh, at least not right now. So staying away from them, but looking at what else we have on the map. As far as I can tell, this is a different part of the game. Nothing matters. We're not wasting time. We're just choosing where to settle, and then the game kind of starts from there. Gold ore. Okay, I haven't seen that either. And gold is very valuable in this game. It is the money. It's the trading currency. Clay, greens, let's, herbs, bird's nest. Let's look over here because I haven't really, this doesn't look like it has much. Got that clay and greens. Fish I found is good in the beginning of the game, but I've also really diversified my food sources. What's that? Coal. Okay, haven't seen that either. So this seems like a much better starting map than what I got, which is perfect. You guys can see all these resources in use. But I, there's no fish over here, is there? Hmm. I like the idea of fish down over here. Where was it? Down on the bottom? Yeah. But that's really far and just... I don't think has enough around it to justify. 
we will still be able to gather and we can still fish uh, anywhere on the water. You just get a much better boost or efficiency bonus when you uh, have one of those fish symbols in your resource area. But then again, there's these boar here. I don't want to settle down near. And I don't want to reroll the map since we're recording this and that just gets boring on your end. But we've got deer here, greens, willow. So if this was kind of the edge we came to and left the board of themselves over there, we could start a town somewhere around here. Clay, this is kind of far to reach. What if we did it up here? I did like the idea of having iron, deer, eggs, berry or hazelnut bush. And where are the boar? The boar are way up here. I'm thinking I like the idea of being down here better. Yeah, look at this variety. Herbs. Greens are down here. Okay, that's perfect. We might be able to gather a circle this big. Maybe it's too small, but you can move it around where you have your gatherer. Uh, you move their assigned zone, if that's what it's called. All right, I've decided it's going to be somewhere in this area. And I wonder if there's maybe more fishing spots along this body of water. We'll have to find that out. Let's start our town... Trying not to cover up too many resources. This is a big hill, isn't it? Yeah. Right here. You can't uh, put buildings on steep slopes. So if we start building... What's this? That's coal. I definitely don't want to cover that up. What if we started... Hmm... I'm still, I'm not sure. I guess we just have to cover resources in this game when we're building out our city. And you just choose which ones those are going to be. I don't want to cover the sand pit. We have more greens over here. We'll cover greens. We can still harvest them for now. All right, there's our town center. This officially starts the game. It starts time. It looks like we, yeah, early spring we start year one. So immediately housing and firewood, just like banished. We have all of these, are they called settlers? I think so. Um, it is, we've 10. We need to house them and feed them. We have 11 months of food in public storage, but notice below it, months of food lost to spoilage over the next 12 months. So this game is a bit more realistic and your food will spoil. There are ways to keep it from spoiling uh, for longer, just like in real life, um, but you do have to deal with that aspect of food. This is our wagon, our storage cart that we came uh, in on. You can see what we have so far, and you can see what else the game has to offer. Look at all these different types of goods and resources and food. So we have some tools to start, some arrows and bows for hunting, and a few swords. I'm st I still don't know if there's a way to tell someone to equip a weapon without just assigning them to be a hunter or assigning them to be a soldier in your barrack. Let's, first thing we need to do, they're going to start chopping down this tree because it's within our build zone, but we need to uh, assign trees to harvest. I am going to, I'll let them just harvest everything for now. That'll be fine. I see one, two stones that will get uh, picked up as well. They're going to start harvesting wood, which our town center needs, 18 logs. Um, as they get started with that, we can speed up the game to three speed. 
Now I'm hoping... Uh-oh. Maybe I shouldn't have done that right away. You probably want to see this. We have a dire wolf here. So they're not the biggest predator to worry about. And we've got, it looks like a 10v1 going on right now. So all of these soldiers are attacking him. And this soldier, not, not soldier, uh, settlers, residents. And this one is the one taking damage. The wolf got about half damage on them. Deer down here. That'll be perfect to hunt. It's kind of a small herd. And that's another thing. This game is realistic when it comes to sustainability. If you wipe out an entire herd, they're not going to just come back. You've wiped out the herd and you have to wait for another one to wander over or something like that. Um, so you want to be limited. You don't want to overhunt. You don't want to overcut trees. You, If you wipe out, clear cut an entire forest, you'll pay for that. You're not just going to have a forest magically grow back. You can pay to plant each tree back, but that's expensive. If you thin the forest and select trees um, like this, it's the better way to cut a forest. And then saplings can grow around the old trees and you keep an ever-growing forest. So that is something to focus on in this game. Let's see here. They are still harvesting wood. I was going to speed the game up and tell you one thing I don't really like. I'm hoping they can change this. The keyboard shortcuts for these speeds are two, three, and four. We have another attack. I thought when we got attacked, it was supposed to uh, slow the game down. Maybe that's because I keep adjusting it right when we're getting attacked. What happened here? Is that a dead person? And why can't I select them? I found that this can be tricky to select people. I'm not sure if that's just an early access thing. Carcass of a hunted animal. Is that all it is? Looks like it. Just a carcass. Yeah, no one died. That's good to see. Um, but we were attacked by a bear, it looks like. Or is that just the predator symbol for all predators? I'm not sure. Um, as I was saying, though, I would really like if they switched these keys because they assigned half speed to the one key, number one. And then this is two, three, and four, which is just so confusing. If they could please just switch the defaults over, and I think I will do that manually on mine, but I think it would just help for everyone. If they made half speed that, what is it, open apostrophe key, or it's got the tilde, tilde, however you pronounce it, above it, it's just that key that's left of the number one key. That could be your half speed, and then you can have one, two, and three be one, two, and three, not two, three, and four. That's just my two cents. It's how The Sims works. It's, a, it's definitely the way to go. Okay, so back to the game. I'm going to speed it up again and hope that doesn't mean we're going to get attacked by a predator. We can build a watchtower, but I wouldn't think we need that this early in the game. And as you see, building our town center just increased our or expanded our fog of war a ton. So we can now see a little bit more of what's out here. But as I said earlier, we've already seen much more than this. So now that this is built, our next concern is going to be food and housing. We have a bit of food, so let's start with housing. But uh, food is always more important than housing. This is our desirability map, but let me check our fertility map. Okay, I probably should have checked that when I settled. Because I just blocked this very fertile land. But knowing that it's going to take a bit before we can actually start farming and seeing that we have this and seeing that we have this, I'm not too concerned about it. It looks really fertile there though, but I'm guessing we'll start farming out here. It's not too hilly, is it? No, and we can always flatten terrain as well. 
So I need to build a house. That's what I was doing. Uh, desirability right now is just going to be kind of poor everywhere. We can do things to change that and to hurt it. Let's start our housing right here. That'll be our first house to build. And then I am going to start thinking about food. We want these buildings built and ready to go before we need the food. So we've got a hunting cabin and a small herd of deer right here. I'm hoping this herd grows. Because I don't want to kill them all. And I'm not really sure how to manage that. Still a housing shortage. We're going to need... Uh, the houses, as you can see, can fit four people. So we're going to need two more houses to house our population. We'll do that. And then... Fishing shack, I'm tempted to build. Remember, there's a body of water over here. There's also that lake up here somewhere with that fishing spot, but it's got to be far out there. And I don't think we should be doing any of that in the early game. So hunter cabin will be the first thing to put up and they'll hunt out here. Let's just drop it in this corner. Like so. The way I build is I'm going to kind of place things in as they fit. It'll kind of come together all like a puzzle. And speaking of which, I also kind of want to plan places for roads if I want them in the future. So we're not going to put that there. Good thing is you can cancel uh, builds like that. We're going to put the hunting cabin, hunter cabin, over here. Or should it be here? Here. And now we're leaving space for a road to come through here and a road to come through here and kind of be a major intersection in our town. I'm still really not sure how the roads work. I, I know that wagons travel on them and people travel faster. Haven't built them yet, though. Uh, we've got the hunting cabin uh, set up, so let's get that going. We'll get housing and start our food as we use months of food. And we have to save up food before winter. Winter is obviously the hardest season. You won't be able to scavenge greens. You won't be able to... Actually, I think you will be able to hunt deer and fish. So we'll have to see exactly what winter means. We've got herbs over here. We've got plenty of greens, bird's nest, more herbs, coal, a sand pit. Do we have willow anywhere? Iron up there. That's great. Hazelnut. Yeah, no willow for baskets. We'll have to find that, but that's that's okay. That's this game, and it's not going to be perfect. You cannot perfectly play this game, um, in the beginning game at least. It is going to push you and challenge you. Um, no firewood. That's going to be the next thing we need. As long as they can, as long as they won't starve, we need them to be able to keep themselves warm. So resources. Firewood splitter. We can throw that in here. And our hunter cabin is built. So that's the first thing I've realized you need to do is retarget the building work radius. We want to pick where they're going to work. And actually, since the deer are all right here, I don't want them wandering too far, but I want to give them a buffer in case the deer wander. Let's do that. They will now start hunting these deer and Hopefully, fingers crossed, not killing them all. It looks like there's only four left. Have some babies, dear. That's a doe. That's a doe. Oh, I think doe just means female deer. Yes, it does. All right. So there's no male deer. Does that mean they can't reproduce and they're all just going to die out on their own? And we should kill them now? 
I don't know. Oh, and that dead carcass that we built over. Guess they're not getting that. If they even still could. Um, food, food, food. Now we're going to want a gatherer's hut. This is resources. We want food production. A fishing forager shack. It's not called a gatherer's hut. We're going to want to be able to get these greens. I think we're going to want the circle to look something like this a lot. But then they can also come down here and just stock up on greens. And when I'm doing this, I'm estimating the circle. Because as you saw with the hunting cabin, we can move the circle around as much as we want. Uh, I'm hoping there's a better way to automate that. Because I'm not really a fan of manually having to move these circles. But I'm wondering if that's just part of the game. So if they're going to be here and here mostly, I'm thinking we'll place the sh shack. Yeah, the shack. Maybe here or up here. Let's just do it. Do we want to leave room for a pathway? Let's leave room for a pathway. Now they'll work on that. Why are people still so unhappy? They're homeless. Why are they homeless? Is it because... They have no firewood? No way! I built two hunter cabins here? Oh my god. You guys probably noticed that and were like, what are you doing? Well, this is a perfect time to show you how salvaging buildings works. You get half of your resources back. Let's make sure we get that housing built then. One and two. Okay, now we've got housing being built. We can see they don't have access to a clean water source. We need a well. Um, If you build near water, like if we had plopped down right over here near this water, they'll just walk over to it and grab water that way. Let's put down a well. Where is that? Resources? Yeah. Basic well. Let's put that right here near housing and near where we could put roads or pathways so everyone can get to the well easily. You can see our hunter. I think that's our hunter over here. No, this guy. Hunting making food for us. The UI is pretty impressive. You can see he has not produced anything yet. This is what he has in storage. I think that's for him to eat while he's working. He's got carcasses left over. If you want to pause and take a look at all of this, you can. I know I kind of clicked out of it before warning you, but go back 10 seconds. Oh, we're zero on uh, logs. They need more. Oh, they still have one command to chop down this bush. But did that say Hawthorn berries somewhere? Hawthorn. Will berries pop back up on this? Yeah, why isn't that showing? Let's see here. There are some uh, keys you can see up here. So let's toggle some overlays. That's desirability. That's water, and that's fertility, and then toggle widgets. F2 toggles this, and we want that on so I can see any problems. Uh, F3 toggles these people, and F4 looks like it's toggling all of the resources that just don't have anything right now. I'm still not exactly sure what that means, um, but let's find out together. All right, as we get building these house, houses, the well, this forager shack, and finish off our firewood splitter, you can see uh, laborers will automatically turn into these professions and start working them, but this does seem like a great time to stop the episode. 
as it gives me a tutorial. Yeah. A great time to stop the episode. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.